Hi everyone, Jade here. Welcome to Paint with Jade. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different today and I'm gonna be doing some commentary, giving you some of the rhyme and the reason behind the brush strokes in this time-lapse video that I did recently of a portrait value study. Uh, what that means is I focused more so on the lighting and where shadows fall rather than say form or anatomy or things like that. So mostly it was about achieving that accurate lighting. Not to say that value and form were, or it's not to say that value and form are independent of each other, just that with every study, I think it's important to pick something specific to focus on. Otherwise it can get a little overwhelming because there are so many aspects and so many, so many different details to a painting and to art. You can see at the beginning, I just gave my canvas a gray wash um, with acrylic and dried it quickly with a hair dryer because I'm impatient. Um, that was just because working on a pure white or a pure black uh, canvas isn't really very, very good, frankly, um, when you're doing value studies. Um, it just helps highlight <laughs> um, <laughs> pun intended, the, uh, the actual true, like, dark points and the true highlight points of the object that you're painting, which can be kind of hard to see when you have such a, such a bright contrasting color like white as your background or such a dark color like black as your background so when it's a kind of in between color or if I'm doing a piece that isn't black and white that's in full color I'll actually do the background um, a complementary color just because it better highlights the colors that you're working with in the piece When I do paint, I do tend to go from darkest to lightest. Um, initially, I put down my darkest values and some of my brightest values and slowly try to sculpt everything between that with a mixture of the two. But I do tend to go from the darkest values to the lightest values overall. Um, that's just a personal preference. There's no right or wrong. Um, although certain mediums definitely benefit from that method more so than others. Namely watercolors. Watercolors I've always struggled with because they are best used going from lightest value to darkest value. And frankly, that's just not the way I work. <laughs> I did mention sculpting earlier. And that is kind of what this reminds me of. And it is kind of what, how I describe it. Um, I'm going over a lot of the same spots um, you'll see over the course of this time lapse um, and just kind of getting into finer details and finer details and further defining the shapes and uh, and the forms with the values and it's very reminiscent of sculpting in that you start with this kind of amorphous gray blob and you slowly define and deepen the aspects of, in this case, a face. 
I do start to fill in some lighter colors to contrast the darker shadows that I've put in. And you'll see me go over a lot of the same spots and repainting and repainting and repainting. But that's kind of the purpose of a study. And I don't think it's anything to ever be ashamed of or, or feel discouraged by. Because it is part of the painting process. I think a lot of a lot of artists struggle with the sense of permanence of their brush strokes. Once it's on the canvas, once it's on the paper, it's 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 forever. They've if one one wrong brush stroke and the whole piece is ruined. And I I don't I don't believe that. I I I really don't believe that. I think that any any mistake within reason <laughs> within reason can be fixed or at the very least if if it's small enough frankly no one's going to notice no one else is going to notice but until you've sealed it with varnish it's always a work in progress and even with oil paint given enough time you can paint over it You can see I start to fill in some of the background with uh, black paint just to give more of a shape to the shoulder that is a little bit more natural because I noticed as I started filling out the values in the face that the body scaling uh, didn't make sense. which is also another reason uh, why I like to go in with a gray wash for the background at the start, rather than staying white or, or black. It just makes it easier to sculpt it later. Believe it or not, this is my first time <laughs> doing a voiceover for one of my time-lapse videos. So please let me know in the comments what you guys think and if it's something I should continue to do. I love hearing feedback from you all, so please don't be shy. <laughs> You'll see me jump around a lot between different parts of the painting. I have a little bit of uh, creative ADD, is what I like to call it, but I get bored of looking at the same part of a painting for a while and I like to switch it up and start working on another, another part for a little bit and then I'll go back to it. It also kind of works out for me because it allows the paint to dry in between layers. I'd like to say there's a method to the madness, but it's really just I, I get distracted. <laughs> This is where I start to go in with some darker values because up until up until now I'd been using a lot of mid mid-tone values. But I wanted to start defining defining the eyes. And I felt like I'd laid down an okay 
mid-tone bass. And to use the sculpting metaphor, this is kind of where I started going in with smaller brushes and and fine-tuning the, the fine details, as it were. Going in with smaller and smaller brushes. I think I used two or three brushes for this entire piece. And the most used brushes for, for this piece uh, were my Filbert, my Filbert brushes. <laughs> I think, I think this is the start of the, uh, the point, or at least this is like the, the start of the point where it stops looking so gargoyle-ish. I think fellow artists can relate when I say that there's a point in, I think, every painting where it honestly is a little bit frightening. <laughs> uh, bef either before you've added eyebrows or before you've added, you know, some sort of defining feature that humanizes the, the portrait. It kind of has this, like, scary uncanny gargoyle valley look to it. Fellow artists, if you know what I'm talking about, sound off in the comments below. I'd love to know that I'm not alone on that. I'm going in with darker and darker values to further define the shapes of the portrait and the model's face. I realize that the lighting isn't the greatest for this, but I do, at the end, move the painting around so that you can see all of the the details and the light catches it so while it might look very dark right now i assure you there's a light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> Some of you might be wondering why I painted the eyes so light and then I just went over it with a dark color, but it plays into what I was saying earlier about how the paint is still wet and it is always a work in progress. Until I've sealed it with varnish, it's not over. And if I'm not happy with it, I'm going to keep painting and painting over it and painting over it. There are paintings that I've actually completed and then scrapped and started all over from the ground up because I wasn't happy with how, how it was finished. It's a little bit of perfectionism. Okay, it's a lot of perfectionism. <laughs> but I think that's it's part of being an artist. You set your your standards for your for your own artwork to be a certain level. One of my favorite questions is how do you know when a piece is finished? How do you know when a painting is done? And I think that it's it's 
very difficult. It's very difficult to know. In some ways, I would say that a painting is never truly finished. I believe it was Leonardo da Vinci that said, no painting is ever finished, but simply abandoned. And I think that that's, that's very true. I don't think it's necessarily abandoned in a, in a, in a sorrowful way or in a, in a negative way, but at some point an artist must part with their painting and and abandon it so that someone else may come to love it and someone else may come to cherish that piece of art. Ooh, girl, finally get some brows. <laughs> Hair is usually one of the last things that I add to portraits. Partially because it's a little intimidating. <laughs> Something about eyebrows especially are always very intimidating to me because I, I always worry that they're going to look drawn on, like, like they're, I mean, they are, but, <laughs> but in a bad way. So I always tend to do them towards the end of a of a of a face. You can tell I'm approaching the end stages of this piece because I've decided or I've made decisions about about her hair and I decided to block in the rest of the the background shade and the background color which I end up just keeping a simple black usually for these value studies Value studies are really important, especially for portraits, because there are a lot of ups and downs and, you know, I guess, you know, hills and valleys across the, the facial structure that people don't really notice or see. And especially if you struggle with shading and you find that your pieces tend to look very flat or the faces are just not coming out I definitely encourage trying a value study in black and white because you'd be surprised and don't just do one <laughs> don't just do one do many, do multiple. Because not every valley is going to be pitch black, and not every hill is going to be pure white. It's very important to, to learn and to understand that as an artist. Whether you're painting portraits, faces, or you're painting landscapes or still life. It is very much part of the learning process and very useful. A 
up until now, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to fully render her hair or just give a little bit of a hint of it. And you'll see when I show the full piece that I just gave a little bit of a hint. I don't go into as much detail with the body, mostly because I wanted to focus on the shape and form of the face rather than the, the full figure. So I don't fine tune the, the shoulders or the neck quite to the extent that I do the rest of starting to add little details like hair falling in front of the face, which also casts a shadow. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. Until next time, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful today.